This podcast is a production of Open Pediatrics, a free online resource for health professionals' education. Visit openpediatrics.org for more. Welcome to the World Shared Practice Forum. I'm Dr. Jeff Burns, Chief of Critical Care at Boston Children's Hospital and professor at Harvard Medical School. I'm very pleased to have with us again for part two of our visit with Dr. Robert Tasker. Dr. Tasker, as you all know, is Editor-in-Chief of Pediatric Critical Care Medicine. He also has academic titles at Boston Children's Hospital and Cambridge University in the UK. He is Professor of Anesthesia and Pediatrics at Harvard Medical School and Founding Chair in Neurocritical Care at the Department of Anesthesiology, Critical Care, and Pain Medicine at Boston Children's Hospital. And he is College Lectureship in Medicine and Postgraduate Tutor Fellow at Selwyn College, Cambridge University in the UK. Robert, thank you for coming back for part two. In part one, you shared with us some really fascinating data about the journal and in particular articles that were highly cited in 2021 in the journal. Can we go to 2022 and let's do the same review. What were the notable articles either by citation or by alt metrics? What are people talking about? And of course, as we're recording this today, it's early October. So the year is, of course, not completed. But what what should we know about what's been published in 2022? Thank you, Jeff. It's a pleasure to be here again. I can talk about the first six months. It is too early to tell from citations, although uh, I'm getting some data on citations. But we're very much led by what have people latched onto in terms of talking about and letting other colleagues know about. So as I mentioned last time, we use the old metric score and anything above 30 in PCCM is doing really well. So January 2022, what are people People talking about. They're talking about the consensus summary and recommendations from the transfusion practice and control stroke avoidance of bleeding guidelines, the so-called taxi cab. That had 62 on the altmetric score. So really good. February 2022, what are people talking about? They're talking about the SCCM clinical practice guidelines on prevention and management of pain, agitation, neuromuscular blockade and delirium, and consideration of the ICU environment and early mobility, the so-called PANDEM guidelines. Wait for it, the altmetric 253. This has gone everywhere. So that's done really well. It has beautiful summary tables and illustrations and something like a 300 page supplemental file just filled with useful things to know and help practitioners. So a lot of material there and it's all open. March 2022, this is a narrative essay. Altmetric score 57, Maya Dewan writing a narrative essay on I Cannot Let It Go. And it's about her reflections and experience in COVID-19. Again, you know, readers are eclectic in their interests and are well worth looking closely at because lots of our supporters and readers are looking at it. April 2022. Last year, I invented a new format. What I wanted was authors to provide for me a concise clinical science review or a concise clinical physiology review. So short text, maybe a couple of thousand words, one huge illustration covering a page, It's an idea borrowed from the NEJM type of basic science review. Well, we have our clinical science review. And in April, a group from SCCM and Polizzi and Bloodnet wrote about MIS-C and host immunological responses. Altmetric score 191. If you haven't seen it, do have a look at it, and I'd encourage people to look at it. May 2022, another format that I sort of reintroduced, which is the technical note. 
This is a technical note about real-time ultrasound guidance for umbilical venous cannulation in neonates with congenital heart disease. And it comes from two hospitals in Pennsylvania. And the idea that when the authors first submitted this, the idea that I suggested to them was, tell us how you did it and give us some illustrations of how you do this. And so it's beautifully illustrated. But as well as that, tell us about the process that you go through at your hospitals for introducing a new technique. What are the checks and balances within your hospitals for doing something like this? And how do you go about training your colleagues and your trainees in doing this technique? And they took it on board. And that's what the article that we've got. So it doesn't surprise me that everyone's talking about it. Altmetrics of 51 in May. And then finally, in June, we had a feature article that had an altmetric of 79. And this was a prospective cohort study on blood sampling and the impact of that on anemia in the PICU prospective cohort study. And it's a theme of research. This, uh, I believe, is coming from Canada. So we're seeing more from these groups. So that's, that's where we are in the first six months. And there are more surprises coming later on. Really terrific. Well, Robert, as you list each interesting article, I just find myself thinking, I got to go home and look at that. So I know as an editor, you're preparing journals three months or so in advance, and all the material that's made it into PCCM right now is valuable. And we look forward to all of it, especially as PCCM has become more competitive to publish him. That said, is there anything you can share with us about what's coming in October, November, and December in those issues of 2022? Too, of course. You know, Jeff, there's lots of things coming out. Some people may have seen some of the material already because before a journal makes it into a particular issue or print or e-pages, some of these will have been posted on the web and into PubMed already, so-called EPUB ahead of print. So people will get an idea of what's going on. Part of what I like to do, though, with a journal issue is actually construct what I think would be a good read as a generalist, taking all materials together and trying to make connections between articles that are within the particular month. So, you know, what's going to be your read for October, November, December? It seems as though a CPR resuscitation theme is picking up in the last three months. You know, use of, in October, use of epinephrine as a flat dose or per kilo dosing, use of sodium by carbonate. What about calcium? So we'll see a large studies on that. There's the whole topic of uh, decision-making and moral distress. We've had a theme about decision-making at the time of initiating ECMO that has run through the year. Well, we have an article from Italy on moral distress, and we have an article about ECMO in patients with disability and their outcomes. Then another theme that's gathering momentum is outcome measurements and a core data set and what what we should be doing about outcomes. So we're seeing information from outcomes in NIST-C cases. We're seeing outcomes in sepsis and modeling various parameters that may influence that. Other themes, uh, we have a, a great nursing research prioritization article using a Delphi approach that's coming from the Asia and Oceana groups. For some reason, we seem to be seeing a lot of articles about tranexamic acid and trauma and pre-hospital administration. I mention this because we've got probably three or four articles talking about an emergency department or pre-hospital and PICU continuum. And we have an editorial from Children's Hospital of Philadelphia focusing on the idea, perhaps as pediatric intensivists and those working within the pediatric intensive care, we should be thinking more about that continuum in terms of research questions. And then, of course, there's lots of CICU. Uh, CICU makes up 50% of what we publish and we maintain those articles. And then mechanical ventilation. Everyone might think that mechanical ventilation has all been answered. Well, it hasn't. And there's going to be lots more articles to read about that.
Well, Robert, that's notable and uh, I think understandable that 50% of the journal is now concerning the expanding field of cardiac intensive care. Can I ask you this? How many readers of the journal appear to be reading the print version? And perhaps even more importantly, I was recently on the online site and I noticed, as you mentioned in the last podcast, there's collections and there's really a number of options to read the material online in a very useful way. Could you take us through both of those questions, print, and then what do you suggest if we visit the online uh, portal for PCCM? I think the print question is is a very interesting question. I don't know the numbers of people who just read the print. I think that subscribers, which is around 2,000, are entitled to receive print or pay for print. I'm of a generation that I like to have print. I get seven journals sent to my home, which are all print, because I like to mark them up as I read them, and it's difficult to do that online. But i the first to admit that that's a generational thing. One of the innovations that we've started as a sort of beta testing uh, this year is to have someone read abstracts that you can get as a podcast. And I don't know if that's where we're going to land eventually, but people like to listen to content whilst they're doing other things, exercising or going to work. And clearly having something on a page is not the solution to that. So there will be an evolution and that's very much dependent upon the subscribers and what subscribers want to do with the material that they're getting. On the website, there are lots of things that are available. There's an item called collections where you can find the items called PCCM notes, methods, and statistics. You can find the editor's choices. And so there are curated items. You can go back to each journal and scan through a journal. I think once we move to online, we have to address the question of what is a journal? And, you know, this concept that we have of a journal dates back to 1850s and before. Things have changed and what end users want has changed. So I'm sure there will be an evolution. As to your question about how much use is there, each year there's about 300,000 visits, separate visits to the journal. And they're called unique visits. And I'll have to check with the publishers as to what a unique visit means. I'm sure there must be a time element to that. But that sounds a lot to me. So it's, it's either a few people doing a lot of searching or it's a lot of people doing little search. What we seem to have is that there's roughly, they look at one and a half papers per visit. I'm not sure how you can look at half a paper, so it's between one and two. Recently, I recall reading an uh, editorial in cardiology, and the uh, editor noted that approximately 13% of the total subscribers read print, and the remainder were reading the content online. Interesting. Robert, in the time remaining, could we talk about 2023? What do you forecast for PCCM in 2023? It's not really a forecast because I'm already filling material into journals for 2023 or issues for 2023. But, you know, there are themes that are coming through. Outcomes research, follow up with quality of life, late morbidity, psychological vulnerability and the impact of that, organization, workload, performance, bundled care, safety. That's going to be a theme that emerges from 2022 to 2023. And as I've mentioned already, respiratory is going to be big. Bronchiolitis, airway management, the question of high flow nasal cannula versus CPAP and the appropriate use of that, and pediatric ARDS. These are all coming through and we will have solid material. Well, Dr. Robert Tasker, once again, it's just always fascinating to catch up with you and to find out what's being published in the journal. What questions are people asking? Where is the research in the field? And this has been a wonderful overview. I know that you devote an enormous amount of time to this effort, as Pat Kohanek did all during his leadership. 
and on behalf of all your colleagues around the world, we thank you and, and we deeply appreciate the care, the attention, the thoughtfulness that you're bringing to the journal to make our field stronger and to bring more light to the care provided to children around the world. So Robert, thank you for all you do as Editor-in-Chief of Pediatric Critical Care Medicine, and thank you for joining us today on the Open Pediatrics podcast. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. This has been a production of Open Pediatrics. Check out the description box to view the resources and journal articles referenced in this podcast. To hear more podcasts like this one, log on to openpediatrics.org.